How many times in a week do you drive? Every day, probably multiple times on some days. And you might be asking yourself, why am I in my vehicle? Well, this is what I use every day. Uh, it's, you know, for a lot of us, it's something that we just take for granted. It's something that we do every day. It's something we don't have to think about. You just get in your car and you drive. For those who are 65 and older, it might not be the same thing. Uh, one As of last year, one in five Americans are 65 and older. Well, what does that mean? A lot of chronic illness, a lot of chronic injury starts to become starts to come to fruition and does not allow a lot of people to do things physically that they used to be able to do. Driving is actually one of those daily tasks that can be one of the first to go. There's a lot of people, my grandparents, I've seen it, them go through it. They reach a certain point or a certain age that it's time to hand over the keys. It's time to get you off the road. It's, it's not safe for you. You need to you know, just let somebody else take care of it. And while that might all sound, you know, nice, I mean, I get my own driver and everything. Well, you have to base your transportation needs off of that caregiver's uh, needs as well. You know, they can't just at the drop of a hat, come and get you and take you somewhere. Uh, they often have a job because they're often younger than that person. So oftentimes people who need transportation like that they feel like a burden or they, they just don't want to mess uh, mess up somebody's day because they're the ones that are needing a ride somewhere. I mean, even if it's just to the grocery store or something, it can, it can be a hassle. Now, whether it be getting in and out of the vehicle, whether it be driving itself, there's a lot of things that we take for granted that those folks have to think about every day. That, you know, what am I going to do? I mean, I can't I can't drive today. My my knees are killing me or my ankles or my shoulders or something. Um, so it's important to think about options for those who are in need of transportation. Now, there's some services that are, you know, call and they'll come pick up whoever you need picking up. And those are all fine and dandy, but that also costs money. There's public transportation, but trust public transportation definitely has its limits. It's it's not very well funded. Um, it can get crowded. It can be uncomfortable. So oftentimes, even that is a hassle. So oftentimes, and according to uh, the CDC, 78% of the time that somebody needs uh, transportation or they lose their transportation ability, 78% of the time, it's often a, uh, a caregiver that's a spouse or a relative often takes over those duties. And it can be a real stress to both the driver and the person in, in need of the driver. So I think that public transportation uh, would be something to invest in, especially for older people, make it more accessible, make it more affordable, things like that. Because they want to live the same active lives that they probably lived before they turned that age. And to just up and stop doing that can have a lot of uh, negative effects on a person's mental health, physical health, and things like that. So if we want the aging population to, you know, stay active, stay healthy, transportation is a major thing. They got to get to the gym. They got to get to the grocery store. They got to get to places outside of their home that, you know, they might can't do the, do it themselves. And now, while well, a caregiver is fine and that's a very kind thing for that person to do. Maybe that's not an option. Uh, so transportation and age, um, they don't go well together. A lot of times that uh, that's one of the first things to go and it's a very important thing that no matter your age you're gonna need I mean doctor's office things like that so uh, with that said thank you